There we go, I heard movement. Oh, that's right. Hello, folks. Welcome back. Oh, there she goes. I knew I'd find her eventually. And she got all snuggly in that closet. As you just saw my cat, that's the hobo cat, and I am the one, the only, what shirt am I wearing? Southern Pro Lucha Libre. Wow. That's only because last night was AEW, and even though tonight was Monday Night Raw, I have to talk a little about AEW because I was not the only person who was very disappointed with that ending. But, that one weirdo, he made some good predictions. I gave him 7.5 out of 8. Wow, he only did get one match. He got two matches wrong. But he figured out the snooze, the match of the night, and, and he got the Stone Cold lock right. So he went from a six to each half a point to a... What's that? Oh, 100% good. To a 7.5? That means he was definitely the head one Triple H or Paul Levesque. And also, I have the, the list of Hobo to shout out. Messenger of Death. Yes! What an amazing name that is. You, sir, always win your matches twice because you win with that six count. So with all that being said, it's going to be Monday, or by the time this goes up, it'll be Tuesday. Let's talk about some Monday Night Raw. Actually, it was weird, because it, it seemed to go quicker than it normally did. Either that, or I was running around so much, and I had a pile of stuff to do. Like, during commercial breaks, it didn't seem that long. Maybe that's the thing. Even though I miss going to the gym, but that's okay. I was just tired feeling a little bit. I have to get this video over quickly and take a shower. So I managed to go to Bike Week. And wow, that was disappointing too, but I'm going to save that for another video. 
This is about Monday Night Raw, so let's talk about some re pro wrestling by WWE. So I saw Bobby Lashley, the almighty, sh shows up. Um, dude gives an interview with Sarah Schreiber. Then The Miz is out in the ring. The Miz speaks. Yeah, Miz, you should keep your big mouth shut. So he challenged Bobby Lashley to a rematch. Uh-uh. That's a bad idea. It was the first match of the night. Actually, a really quick way. Really quick start, because normally it takes like 20. Like, SmackDown was about a good 20, 25 minutes with zero wrestling. This was only about five minutes or so. Before you know what the first match was going to be. So I like that. So we have Bobby Lashley taking on The Miz. Uh, <laughs> the Miz just tries to stall and stall and stall. Because he knows he is no match for the almighty Bobby Lashley. Eventually he gets stuck in that big stalling vertical suplex. Oh, that's so good looking. Oh, uh, Harbor. He, 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 he takes a bump for that. He goes to the outside trying to recover. Bob, or he's in the ring. Bobby Lashley kind of tries to spear him in the corner. Miz is a little too smart for that. He gets out of the way. Let, he lets Lashley post himself. Or the outside, uh, Lashley posts himself again. In the ring, though, Lashley's such a beast, that big clothesline. Uh, we would get instances of Drew looking on. Uh, Lashley just tossed Miz around at one point. Miz... Yeah, and this is, he would just really make Bobby Lashley more aggravated with him. He got caught. Lashley just dropped him. Eventually, uh, Bobby Lashley has that spine buster of his. He gets stuck in the full Nelson, even though I think Lashley does it like this, which is weird. Because like this, you actually get a lot more torque down. But and it does look better, the classic Hercules Herculean way of doing that. Uh, full Nelson. Miz has the taps. Bobby Lashley's going on to WrestleMania. Definitely. Solid match. Accomplish what it should. I mean, the Miz isn't bad. Cheeseburger match. And then Drew gets interviewed, and then he gets jumped by Saint Sheamus. There was a uh, Shane recap with Braun Strowman. Our truth tried to talk to Braun, trying to apologize to him. Who knows why? Uh, Braun then asked Shane to say Shane. So Shane just literally comes up to ring. I'm sorry, and walks out. I'll tell you how to do. Uh, then it was a Shane and S Sarah Schreiber interview. Again, she's like, he's like, no, I don't want to talk to you. Whoa, these aren't my bosses at work. <laughs> this is. This is the second in command here. But then we have um, the next match. It was Drew McIntyre and Sheamus. This was fun. This was just a brawl. These two don't like each other. This was a typical NWA brawl. You're not going to start a brawl. The collar and elbow type. You're going to start just throwing punches left and right. Wild haymakers. Hoping something hits. Yep. Maybe a kick or two to, to the groin. Well, no kicks to the groin. But that was a kicked rope to the groin, which is pretty good. Which... Again, if it's a no DQ match, first one gets kicked in the balls, loses, or it should be that or it should be that way. Uh, Drew jumps Sheamus, and then it's just a brawl, and then they go to the table, continue brawling right around the table. Now it's a it's a barricade spot. They finally do get in the ring. Uh, Sheamus gets slammed into the steps. Um, they go back to the outside. Sheamus gets slammed into the steps. Sheamus hits a rolling senton in the ring. That was pretty... Again, that's pretty good. You know what? Now that Sheamus has been out of the League of Nations and is not really in contention for the WWE Championship, he's not being pushed. He's not there to help people being pushed. He's there really to do his own thing, and he does it really good. This is a way that they needed to use Sheamus. When he was with the World of League of Nations, meh, it was okay. When they put the belts on him, it was more so to get give Roman the push than to give Sheamus the belt. So when you're going to do it that way, you really don't need to. Again, they were trying to really help Roman Reigns out, but it really hurt Roman more. Because it was like he was just being fed challenge after challenge. Uh, Sheamus hits a cloverleaf. 
Drew counters that. Uh, he gets up. It's a spine buster. Then that was a like straight chair headshot. Sheamus chucked the chair. You could tell Drew got his hands up. It's like, whoa, that went right for his head. That was actually pretty cool. It wasn't the um, Sammy Guevara chair toss to Matt Hardy. No, this, like, like you could see he fully protected himself. That was good. It was a big bro kick on the outside. And then both of them decided to pick up the steps. And oddly enough, don't worry, Chief, I'm going to bed soon. My cat's crawling around. I found her hiding in the closet. <laughs> Make sure she was still alive. I poked her in her tummy. I don't know. I, I couldn't tell if she was staring at me. She just makes me smile so much. There she goes. Gotta have a pet, folks. Cats are amazing creatures. Uh, but yeah, like the way they held the steps, they, they, they held them up, but they put the V, the cutout V section, like right on their forehead. If you're gonna support, you wanna put it on top of your head, use your head as a support. Not kind of put it against your forehead because that's bad because when it hits something, it's going to smack you in the head. So yeah, so they both get the worst of that. Uh, referee, I think, checks on Drew. Drew like, mumbles something to him, so the ref said he's okay. Uh, Drew, uh, the referee went over to Sheamus. Sheamus didn't move, so the ref's like, well, what, what? No! He didn't put up the dreaded X symbol, though, which is good. Or if they did, they did it kind of afterwards. Yeah, so they had to help Drew and Sheamus out. I'm sure they told Drew just to sell a little bit more so and figure out what was wrong with Sheamus. Remember, Sheamus does have a history of, history of head injury. I don't think it was the initial kind of bonk against the steps. I think it was on the way down where it kind of like really got him. So again, that was actually a, for a grudge match for a vendetta. I'll say, you know what? That was a surf and turf match. Then we had the Orton and Fiend recap. AJ was doing an interview. Orton shows up. Yeah, Orton, you want to see what weak is? Don't be weak. Meet me in the ring. Uh, then we had Xavier Woods taking on Slapjack, or as I like to call him, Casey Jones. It was Shane Thorne of the old TM61. Uh, sh uh, it was an okay match. I know, it was Shelton Benjamin. I'm, so I'm sorry. No, I, got, I was confused. It was... Xavier Woods of the New Day taking on the Hurt Business, Shelton Benjamin. I knew I wrote the wrong thing somewhere. I'm sorry. Technical error. Shelton Benjamin is too big, too strong for Xavier Woods early on in the match. Uh, again, those knees, the vicious striking by Shelton. Very New Japan style. However, he decides to, to do too much of this. Yapping to Kofi Kingston on the outside. And when he was distracted... <laughs> He got rolled up in a small, in a small, in a legitimate small package. Xavier Woods picked up the pin. One, two, three. And that was it. That was actually a pretty quick match. I think it's going to set up something more so for. And this seems this all to be. They're skipping over Fastlane. They're going right to WrestleMania, it feels like. Because it feels like they're leading up to WrestleMania with a lot of these matches. So this will probably be the WrestleMania uh, tag team match, the New Day versus the Hurt Business. And we'll see what happens. And this match, eh, it was okay. It was a ham sandwich match. Then uh, Matt Riddle was back. Uh, Sarah Schreiber's interviewing him. She's doing a lot of interviews lately. And they have some new guy. Um, they did have some new guy too. Some very British person. Or Irish person. Or Scottish. I can't tell. They, they all sound different to me. I'm, I'm sorry, bum slicks. You also sound like like British people to me. Or at least I can tell I can tell the difference between British and Scotch Irish. Scottish and Irish people, I can't tell the difference between. British people do have a very distinct accent. It's a little bit different from from their northern relatives, from the Jutland. There's an old historical term for you. So yeah. Uh, so Matt Riddle was being interviewed. The New Day shows up. Um, He's just a goof. Then it was Slapjack, who was Shane Thorne of TM61, taking on Matt Riddle. Uh, Mustafa, Mustafa, Mustafa Ali. Now, I, now I'm doing that. 
Uh, it's just talking all the time. Like, you better do this. I beat him. You better beat him. Uh, when they were in the ring, it was all Matt Riddle in the ring. Outside, Slapjack again gets into control. The way Hill should. If Hill's going to cheat, he's going to cheat on the outside. He's not going to do it right in front of the referee. Uh, let's see here. Slapjack got caught on the top rope. And then he did the headbutt with a mask. That should just be a near instant KO. Um, but then there was a big knee by Matt Riddle. There was, was no snapback. So that's what Slapjack went for instead. He ate the flash knee. Or the final flash knee. And the bro Derek. I don't think he knows who bro Derek was. But that's okay. I remember who bro Derek was. She was hot. And then so Matt Riddell won over over Casey Jones or as people call him Slapjack. Ollie's upset. He goes on his little tirade. It is what it was. You, you knew Slapjack wasn't going to win. Or if he did win, there'd be something goofy going on. A ham sandwich of a match. Then it was Braun and Shane McMahon again. Um, I don't know. Braun had to leave the arena. Uh, some car left. What do you say, Chiswa? Wow. All right. Very soon. Yep. I know. I found your nap spot. <laughs> There's fewer and fewer nap spots that I haven't discovered yet. I mean, but mainly when you, when you have such a beautiful, loving, and caring animal, you want to make sure that she is okay. Even though she can't hide underneath other people's houses. Bad kitty cat for doing that. But yeah. Um, then we had Naomi and Lana taking on Nia Jax and Shayna Baszler. And Nia just had um, Reginald. And it was so funny. Especially towards the end. It was, it was kind of a good chuckle there. Fast start by both uh, Naomi and Lana. Definitely the quicker, much more agile, more wrestling based. A little bit more almost lucha based tag team. A lot of great double teams. Naomi, Naomi's probably imparted a lot of info onto Lana. Because Lana seems to be... Lana's now steadily improving now that she has someone to work with. She's not stuck dealing with Lacey Evans. She's not being the ravishing Russian. She's back to her Tennessee accent. So as long as that doesn't change too often, I'm kind of okay with it. kind of like ditched that a while ago. So that was good. You know, she was a Rusev. Rusev. Guys, I still think she was undergoing punishment for Rusev leaving to AEW. And, and, and we'll see what happens. Because I know there's all ego Ethan Page and Christian in AEW now. So we'll see what happens. I can't make Vin, Vince that happy. But you, you never know. He... He might have said, you know what, you're old, you're, you're, kind, you're, you're getting up there in years, you're a little bit broken, we're not going to pay you that much, you're not going to do that much. AEW said, here's a pile of money, we'll, we'll figure out fun stuff for you every week. Who knows? So, but this match, again, the great double teams by Naomi and Lana, they were really good. Uh, Naomi, again, did a spinning dive when it seemed that Nia was going, Nia and Shane was going to take control on the outside and beat up poor Lana. Lana ducked out of that. Naomi does a, a flippy twist thing outside the ring that was really good. Uh, back in the ring, Shane is back to working the arm over. Nia gets tagged in. Naomi and Lana proved to be a little too quick for Nia Jax. However, Reginald distracts Naomi and Lana. They did a great double team spot where Naomi was standing, spread her legs a little bit. Lana came in, hit a sliding drop kick onto Reginald. But then that was enough of a distraction for Nia Jax to get the upper hand, do that like kind of prop up power bomb, which actually looks great if she could ever get it right. Because every time it looks like she's going to drop someone. And that's not going to go well. So that was good. Nia and Shayna pick up the win. Uh, we'll see who's going to take them on in the future. Eh, it was a ham sandwich match. The fun part about this match is that Nia literally carried Reginald off with her. That was funny. Then there was a little quick recap about what happened earlier with Bobby Lashley. A big muscle boy. Dude, he can, he is, he's fast like, all over the place. Because trapezius or vascular. I know his shoulders because it's all messed up. 
super vascular. He has the one scar on his cheek. I think he got that. I remember when he got that. And that just, that just formed, unfortunately, in his case, a keloid scar. But, yeah. That happens, unfortunately. There's some scientific terminology for you. Keloid scar. So then the, the main event of the evening. You have Randy Orton taking on the phenomenal AJ Styles. Classic tie-up. Orton's obviously much bigger, much uh, a little bit too strong for AJ. Gets him in the corner. Um, uses the referee as a shield when the referee tries to break him up. And he just punches him. Um, beats up AJ a lot. This, uh, puts AJ's hand on the mat. Finger stop. Big European uppercut. Takes the boot, rakes AJ's eyes with his bootlaces. Oh, classic heel. That's so good. That harkens back to the days of the Minnesota Wrecking Crew. Ole and Arn Anderson. Uh, a little bit of the fabulous Freebirds when they were heels. That's good working as a heel, especially. Then uh, to the outside they go. There's a classic backdrop to the table. Randy Orton throws AJ back in the ring, but AJ was able to... Hit him with a with with a forearm, then hit the uh, flying forearm, a kind of catapult slingshot flying forearm. That was really good. Uh, back inside the ring, AJ like tapped Randy Orton with a, with a right hand. He only nudges says, "Whoa, that just and Randy Orton dropped like a sack of potatoes." That's either a really great sell job or it was a receipt from AJ getting potatoed somewhere, because you could tell right around the lip it looks like AJ bit his lip. Biting the lip probably happens all nearly all the time. I think on some wrestling show. I mean, just land the wrong way. Mm, and just catches something. So that's probably nothing. It's probably more so Randy Orton doing a great sell job. Then Alexa Bliss eventually shows up with her musical box. Um, she she lights a she lights a match and the and the ring pyro goes off. And by the way. That pyro that Alexa Bliss sent off, uh, sparked off, or caused the flames, that was much more impressive than the explosion, or the exploding ring at the end of the AEW pay-per-view, because myself and I think a whole bunch of others agreed that was like, like, we're like watching, they're like, that's it? You could hear a chorus of boos. Um, people were chanting, this effing sucks. Someone was caught chanting, refund. 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 You don't realize, if you're going to make a promise like an exploding ring, we want to see, like, at least a ring collapse. And I'm sure they could have done it. I don't know. Uh, pe people are saying, yeah, it was, it was a botch. I, I don't think it was so much as a botch. One, either... Some, some officially Jacksonville said you can't do that. You have to figure out an alternative using, um, using say, X amount of pyrotechnic stuff. Or two, which I don't think would be true, they just didn't have the budget for it and said, and it was a last minute idea and said, uh oh, we have to get stuff. And Lurie went to, I'll give a plug out, Sky King or Phantom Fireworks and got some stuff. That's honestly what it looked like. And they got the cheap stuff, too. Never, ever get the cheap stuff. Well, you can, if you're me. Honestly, the fireworks I've set off look better than that. But yeah, Alexa Bliss sets off the, the flame. Again, it looked better than the AEW one. Um, then Randy Orton starts pu puking black stuff. AJ has the phenomenal forearm. AJ Styles wins. One, two, three. Solid match. Can't complain. Cheeseburger match. And that, folks, was Monday Night Raw. For the most part, a solid show. Again, leading more towards a teasing, I think, of WrestleMania. And on, on, on Raw, they've already said, no, Fast Lane might as well be done and over with. So, yeah. Um, a little bit about this week's schedule, because this week sucks for me, and so does next week. Uh, this video will probably go up sometime tomorrow. I don't know when. Um, I'm just gonna like literally like clean up, shower, go to sleep. So I might fiddle with it a little bit tomorrow. Let it upload. 
I'll get it up probably before I go to my second job. Tomorrow I have to go to work a second time, so I work 7.30 to 4, and then 4.30 to 8.30, and then, I'm, then I do have to go to the gym that day, and I might hobo. Wednesday is kind of the same deal, so there's going to be there's going to be no impact, no AEW show. Thursday, I'm going to see if I can get a prediction show in. If not, I'll make it Thursday and, ha and have it set up for Friday, because I know on the 13th, Impact is having one of their monthly shows. I forget what it's called. I'll figure that out in the next couple days. But, so Thursday is just going to be that. The 12th, that's going to be a very typical Raw, Raw Review show. I'll get that going. Uh, the 13th, depending if I get out of the motor, motorcycle races on time, that would be... Okay, we're here. Probably all, if not all, at least the vast majority of the Impact show. The Sunday I'm off, baby. That's good. And then it's kind of a repeat next week. So next week's also going to be interesting. And I can't do my Lenten promise of visiting friends on Thursday. But I have to work Thursday. And I have to let my other... Oh my, oh, so, many, so much working. This week I'm working... One, two... Three, four, possibly five different jobs. Because my friend said she needed me to work the uh, TPC. Oh, if you're in the Jacksonville area, um, they need workers for TPC Sawgrass. I think I volunteered to work. Or why? I, well, I have to figure out interview stuff. But like if I have to drive up to Jacksonville to interview for freaking one day, not happening. I'll let her know that too. I'm like, I'm not driving for a freaking interview for one day. That's ah, not happening. Because Larry, like, I could live without that job. That was more to help her than anything else. Well, also, I get paid too, so. And the fact that she's a fat.